In this video we're going to be talking about the article that appeared in the Times newspaper on the 9th of January. Welcome back to the Barrett channel and welcome to another video. If it's the first time to this channel for you, we are father and son duo living here in Shenzhen, China and we do videos about our experience living here, our time traveling around China, various things we eat here. We also cover tech and we also cover opinion. So as I said at the start, I want to talk about this article that appeared in the Times this uh, Saturday just gone. As many of you will already know, the Times is owned by the Murdoch News International Group and they also own channels like Fox News and the Wall Street Journal. So even before I saw the article, I knew what type of article it was going to be. So the article appeared on their online edition and I'll try and put a link, I will put a link in the description but it is behind a paywall so you may not be able to see the whole article. It also appeared on page 7 of the printed version of the paper and we actually got, we did, we did quite well because we, we, we got a full page and uh, interestingly you'll notice on the print edition they showed a picture of Ollie on the Bund in Shanghai. Now that was a picture that was taken on his birthday and it's kind of interesting that they use that picture because that picture sort of portrays that Ollie is living a glamorous lifestyle here in China. So they, they, they're trying to, even before you start reading um, the article, they're trying to paint a picture that we're living this luxurious lifestyle here in China. So the article was written by two journalists, called, uh, one by the name of Ben Ellery and the other one Tom Knowles. It'd be interesting to know if either of those two have ever been to China at any point. And the, the article claims that they've uncovered that myself and Ollie are working and being paid by the Chinese government to push Chinese propaganda. And they claim to have conducted an investigation into us. Now, what I suppose they mean by an investigation, that Ben and Tom have probably sat at their computers for a couple of hours, um, done a little bit of Googling, and, and maybe made a couple of phone calls to a couple of, of people. I would imagine that's probably the scope of their investigation. So they then open the article with some comments from both myself and Ollie which they've taken completely out of context and they've obviously done that to to set that sort of negative tone for the article before they get into the the meat of the article and it's quite interesting I, I feel how a lot of these uh, sort of anti-China journalists or anti-China press sort of do this when they write articles. They, they always try to set this sort of negative tone at the start by the kind of wording they use or, or quotations that they take out of context. I'll put links to those videos that the quotes were taken from and maybe you can watch them for yourselves and decide for yourself the, the context of, of those quotes because certainly in the article they're not in the context they were originally. What's kind of also interesting is early on in the article he tries to justify the out of context quotes he uses by uh, mentioning uh, ASPI which is the Australian Strategic Policy Institute and they've made, uh, they've produced a number of anti-China reports and a lot of their reports are based on reports written by a guy called Adrian Zenz. There's two things I'd like to bring up here. First of all, if he'd have dug a little deeper, Ben uh, would have probably found this out for himself because it's pretty well documented that, first of all, ASPI, they receive a large chunk of their funding from the American industrial military complex type of companies, weapons makers, you know, uh, these kind of people. And they also have links to prison labor. So that, that's, that's kind of an interesting one. And Adrian Zenz is somebody who writes fairly fictitious reports all based on rumor and, and ridiculous calculations and that. And, and again, both of these organizations or, or both ASPI and Adrian Zenz have been extensively debunked and you can search that on, on Google yourself and, and, and you will see. 
But it's interesting again that Ben didn't do any research into looking at the background of those organisations or people before he used them as references in his article. And if any of you are wondering about the contact between the um, American industrial military complex and the ASPI, well, it's obvious that they have a goal to sell more weapons um, to countries around the world because that's their business. So if ASPI paint China as this huge threat, then it will maybe encourage other countries to buy more weapons from those companies. So just in case you, you're unsure why there's that link, that just clarifies that for you. The article then goes on to mention about Oli um, having a successful YouTube channel about um, Call of Duty. And again, I'm not really quite sure um, what the uh, relevance of that is at all. Maybe it's just a filler or it's trying to paint that Call of Duty as a game that you go around killing people and that might somehow have a, a bearing on his, his thinking. Uh, again, just ridiculous waffle if you ask me. So now let's get to the meat of the article, what, what Ben and Tom are trying to say. So what they're trying to say is that we are paid by the Chinese government to push a certain narrative. And they cite that we were paid to go on various trips with Chinese media. Um, the media company they, they cite in the article is CRI, which is China Radio International. Yes, China Radio International are a state media company, very similar to um, the BBC. You know, they're funded by taxpayers' money and they produce various content about China. Um, you know, all sorts of different content. They have radio stations, they have a website, they have video channels, etc, etc. And the accusation was that we are being paid by the Chinese government to produce videos that push the narrative of the Chinese government. And that is absolutely, totally, 100% untrue. So let, let me explain what happens here. So an organization like CRI might approach us and say, we're organizing a trip to Shanghai, for example, and we're inviting a number of influencers and media people, press people to our event that we're holding in Shanghai. And we're gonna take you to see the Bund and we're gonna take you to see the French Quarter and we're gonna take you to see some, some other places within Shanghai. And uh, we, we then might ask you what, what your thoughts about those places are and we will use that for, for Chinese media and they will offer to pay for the transport, the flights, the travel. They will either pay for meals or give us an allowance to buy food. And they will often pay for accommodation. And then when we are there, if we want to, we can also make our own content. I'm sure they hope we make our own content, but there's no, there's no contract that we must make content or make content of any particular kind. We've been on a couple of these trips and the one that's mentioned in the article was a trip to Xi'an. And uh, it was a great trip. We were on that trip with a number of other influencers. There was photographers there. There was other YouTubers. There was people who, who sort of do stuff on other social media. And we had a great time. I mean, you know, it, it, it's ridiculous that Ben and Tom mentioned that Ollie took part in a farcical vegetable dance. Well, actually, it's called having fun. It, it wasn't a farcical vegetable dance. Ollie was having fun. We were enjoying ourselves. That may be a new concept to people outside of China that people in China have fun, but I can assure you it does actually happen here. So during these trips, they, they take us to various different places in a particular area. Now, sometimes we may go to one place we don't find it so interesting. Other times we go to places where we find really interesting. So obviously at the places that we think are interesting, we generally make videos because that's what we do. We are content creators. So we make videos for our social media. But I can assure you at any time, we are not under 
any direction whatsoever about what to say or what we film or what. We give a no narrative whatsoever. Generally before we arrive, they will give us some facts about the place and tell us a bit of the history or whatever facts they have available. But at no time do they ever suggest we need to talk about this or we need to talk about this. And in fact, there are many places we go where we don't even make videos because it's not of interest to us. For example, on the Xi'an trip, we went to a number of museums. Now, museums are really not my thing, so we didn't make videos about museums. Now, they take us to something that's technology based, which is really what I'm into, and we will make videos about that. But all of those videos contain our own thoughts and our own opinions. And I just want to get onto this. When, when we make opinion videos, sometimes we'll be on these trips and we meet up with other YouTubers. So you may have saw a video with me talking with Matt from the Gio Nation and Ollie did one with uh, Fernando from Fermubi, uh, formerly China Teacher Brand. And those videos, it's nothing to do with CRI or, or anything to do with the Chinese government. So let me give you an analogy. Let, let's say um, we have a friend in the UK who lives in the Lake District and he invites us up to the Lake District. He's a, he's a wealthy guy. He knows us content creators. Um, we, we like making content and he loves the area where he lives in the Lake District. So he invites us to there. He pays for our accommodation. He pays for our travel and he buys us meals while we're there. And he takes us around showing us various places within the Lake District. We then decide that, yeah, it's great here. We're going to make some videos because we're enjoying ourselves. So we make three videos and we put them out on our channel. Does that mean that friend has funded the videos? Personally, I don't think so. He's funded the trip, but he hasn't funded the videos. He's had no say in what goes in the videos because he hasn't funded them. Now, some of you guys out there might not agree with that, you know. There's going to be people who have a different opinion of that, but I can't help that. You have to make up your own mind. So, yeah, just, just in conclusion of that, we are sponsored for the trip, but the content of our channel is completely independent of, of that trip. We choose what content we will produce, we decide what we're going to say in that content and we decide what we're going to publish on our channel. Now that is completely different from a sponsored video. Now we have done sponsored videos here in China, but those sponsored videos here in China are generally for products or manufacturers or brands. Now another thing that was leveled at us in that article was that um, people from the Chinese government are retweeting our videos. Now, we have no control over who shares our videos. Now, going back to the Lake District analogy, if the tourist board of the Lake District um, wanted to promote those videos, that they can. They, can. they can link to our channel and promote those videos because they might think those videos are saying some nice things about, about the Lake District. So they will promote them. And we have no control over that. Just like we have no control over who, um, you know, promotes our videos that we make about China. Um, another point um, that they, I just want to address um, in this video is that there was the the article was mainly about myself and Ollie, but they also included um, Jason. Um, in there from This Is China and also Matt from, from the Gio Nation, also Fernando uh, featured in one of the videos. Now, initially they said in the article that they reached out to all of us and nobody responded. Um, I actually thought I had responded and I actually told the other guys that I had responded to them. But subsequently later I found that um, the email I thought I'd sent back to it was actually stuck in my drafts box so I didn't actually respond to them but I will put the email on the screen that I, I intended to send them and uh, it's just a very um, short piece saying that we are not funded by the Chinese government or CRI for our videos and actually I feel that the I received that email literally one day before the publication of that article. Um, I think Jason received an email also, um, but he didn't see that till after the article was produced. And um, Matt and Fernando didn't receive emails at all. 
I think, I feel the article had already been written and I think all they wanted is they were hoping that we'd sort of give a nice big response so they could they could just use more of that email to take completely out of context for their article because as I said at the beginning, there is a lot of stuff that they took really out of context um, in that article. So in closing this video, I'd just like to, to reaffirm that from our point of view, there was a lot of untruths in that article. Yes, we do go on sponsored trips and we will probably continue to go on sponsored trips, but in no way will that influence the content of our videos. And if in the future I am approached to uh, sponsor the content of a video, I will 100% turn that down because that's not what I am. Both myself and Ollie can stand by everything we say in our videos. It's completely our opinion and we will continue to give our opinion. And that opinion is based on our own experiences here in China. So thank you all for, for watching this video. Thank you for subscribing and supporting us on the channel. Please leave your comments down below. I know that some of you will have a different opinion to us and that's fine. Everybody is entitled to their own opinion, but that is no reason to attack and lie about people. So as always, for now, take care.